So I want to play you some audio here. And I just heard it a few minutes before the show started. It happened this afternoon. And it just, it, I have to admit, this rankles me. This bothers me. So there was an exchange yesterday at the White House press briefing about illegal immigration. The president's press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre, said something. She asserted what was presented as a fact about illegal immigration and the border crisis. It was, spoiler alert, dead wrong what she said. Factually inaccurate. And a number of our colleagues here at Fox who cover this issue, they called it out and they pointed it out. The factual inaccuracy. So today, our colleague Peter Ducey followed up on it. And just the attitude that Corinne Jean-Pierre shot back at Peter for asking a completely legitimate question is quite something. Now, I'll play you both of them. I'll play you what she said yesterday, and I'll play you what Ducey asked and then her response to it in just a second. But there's a little bit of context I want to remind you of before we roll tape. Last time we had Peter Ducey on this show, we didn't do it on purpose. It just happened to be he was booked late in the week. It was like a Thursday or a Friday a couple weeks ago. And he had been sitting in that briefing room all week. And for the most part, Corinne Jean-Pierre had refused to call on him. He got like one question all week. She declined to look at him or call on him for most of the days that week. And he was polite about it. He was a professional about it. I was a little bit more irked and said so on the air because I'm paid for my opinions. Peter is paid to do journalism and to ask questions. But obviously there was some effort on KJP's part to strategically or tactically freeze out Peter for a while. And I wonder after this back and forth if she might go back to not calling on him for a while. Because this does not make him look bad. This makes, in my opinion, and I wonder if you'll agree with me, this makes her look bad. So let's start with yesterday. Just a flagrant lie. Now, maybe she would say she misspoke or she needed to clarify. But on its own, standing on its own, this is an outright falsehood in cut 10. When it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down uh, by more than 90 percent. And that's because of this act, the actions that this president has taken. But we know that more action needs to be taken. So it has to be legislative action. We're going to continue to call Congress. So I got that soundbite texted to me last night from a colleague who was dumbfounded that she said that. And my colleagues at townhall.com clipped it. They put it on social media. I mean, it's just wrong. Quote, when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down by more than 90 percent. And that's because of the actions this president has taken. Illegal immigration has not come down 90 percent in any way, shape or form. It's up. We're in the middle of a record-setting crisis, yes, because of the president's actions, just the opposite way than what Corinne Jean-Pierre is suggesting is the case. We have now had more than two straight years where every month the number of encounters has been at least 150,000 at the southern border, not counting tens of thousands of gotaways every single month. The number has been between 150,000 and 250,000 or so every month for 25 months. And as we reported on the show yesterday, there has been an explosion just in the last couple of days back up to huge numbers. 22,000 encounters in just three days, the last three days, according to Border Patrol. That's back to very high levels. So... You cannot slice any of the data. I understand that politicians spin and press shops figure out how they can cherry pick and sort of isolate one little number and try to tell a better story. There is no story to tell in which illegal immigration in this country is down by more than 90 percent. It's just 
completely 180 degrees from the truth. It is, put simply, a lie. So, some of our colleagues uh, spring into action. Griff Jenkins, who's down at the border right now covering that issue, he tweeted this earlier. The new press secretary claimed that, quote, illegal immigration is down 90 percent, stands in stark contrast to the actual data. Compare this year to this time last year. So here are just the stats. Listen to the stats, and I'll get to Ducey's question in a second and KJP's response. But the fiscal year to date last year through May 1st, at that point last year, there had been 1,000,000 304,398 encounters, which, by the way, is an insane number. 1.3 million encounters last year through May 1st. And again, that doesn't count the gotaways. The many, I mean, at this point, you add them up, well over a million gotaways under Biden's watch. But 1.3 million apprehensions through May 1st last year. What are the numbers this year? 1,441,100 1,441,193. Same exact time frame, one year apart. Last year is 1.3 million. This year it's 1.44 million encounters, plus all the gotaways each year. And Jean-Pierre says, again quoting her, when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down by more than 90%, and that's because of the actions this president has taken. Absolutely wrong. Okay, so in comes Peter Ducey to ask the question. Here's a giant whopper that has been told. I'm not sure if any of the fact checkers have been on this. PolitiFact, maybe they're out to an extended eight martini lunch or something. They're not interested in this one. Are the other fact checkers like asleep at the switch? What's going on? But some of our colleagues at Fox News said, okay, I mean, this is not even remotely in the ballpark of being true. Peter Ducey wants to know, hey, where'd you get that number? And here's how this went down. Just listen to the tone of voice, the snippiness, the dismissiveness from Corrine Jean-Pierre in response to Peter Ducey's entirely fair and correct question, cut 25. You said yesterday that when it comes to illegal migration, you've seen it come down by more than 90%. Where did that number come from? It was, I was CBP speaking. is telling us the number is. I hear you. I'm about to answer. I'm about, people more I'm about to answer you. Year so if you, far. if you, if the dramatics could come down just a little bit. I, you um, know, it, the dramatics could come down a little what's bit. What's dramatic about asking a question about. Okay. I'm, I'm going to answer. So I was speaking to the parolee program. As you know, the president put in place a parolee program to deal with, uh, to deal with certain countries uh, on, on ways that we can limit illegal migration. And we have seen, the data has shown us that it has gone down by more than 90%. That was what I was speaking and to. to no, I'm, really we're, we're, we're going to go. We're going to move. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're moving, Peter. We're moving, Peter. Cool it with the dramatics, Peter. That wasn't even like in the ballpark of a dramatic question. I remember what those sometimes felt like when, let's just say, a certain correspondent from a certain cable news outlet, a certain third place cable news outlet, would get up and give basically like a radio monologue for seven minutes screaming at whoever Trump had up there about his opinions and America and democracy and who we are and all that nonsense, that's theatrics. That's dramatics. It's not what we just heard there from Peter Ducey, who just said, you gave a stat. Where did you get that number? Because the actual numbers are this. And she's basically telling him, she cuts him off almost immediately, tone it down. And then she gives the answer, which is what she was supposedly speaking to was this specific small niche program that they implemented involving this uh, parole program for a limited number of people from a small handful of countries. And within that context, that sub subsection of illegal immigration was for a short period of time down by 90 percent. Now, Let's just start with what should be obvious. That's not what she said yesterday. 
She said illegal migration was down by more than 90 percent. That is not true. If she was talking about one little small program, she could and should have specified that because on the broader issue of illegal immigration, she was absolutely dead wrong. And what that calls for, by the way, is not being a jerk to Peter Ducey or any journalist who might call you out for making the mistake. What that calls for is a mea culpa. Thank you for your question, Peter. I would like to address that. As a matter of fact, I did misspeak yesterday. What I was referring to was X, Y, and Z, which in that context, yes, it's down 90%, but that is not accurate of the broader picture. Obviously, there's a lot of work still to do. I regret misspeaking. That helps explain why I said what I said. That would have been an okay answer. But instead, we got this sneering condescension, cutting him off, calling, like, pretending he was play acting, being dramatic, and then just pretended like, well, of course I was talking about this thing, not the actual quote that I said out loud that you just quoted back to me. Like, there's no acknowledgement of getting something wrong, which she did. And instead, she decides to sort of get her dander up and try to go after Peter like it's his problem. It's her problem. And I think part of that tone is because she knew she was wrong, but because of her brand and because of, you know, her fan bases, because she actually has a fan base, her fan base, their perception of Fox requires basically never backing down, never admitting you're wrong, certainly not to Peter Ducey. And so she had to basically pretend that she didn't say what she said and that Ducey was being somehow unprofessional by asking her a question about it. And just the dripping condescension, that's never a good look in general, I would say. Even if you're someone who is on top of your game and really accomplished and really good at your job and you're right on the facts, even if all four of those things are true, being super condescending about it doesn't reflect terribly well on you. But in this case, that's not what applies to her. She's bad at her job aggressively, ostentatiously bad at her job, as many Democrats will admit in private, and they'll also wring their hands about why they're stuck with her for a number of reasons that we've talked about before. We don't have to get into it. But she's bad at her job, and she was wrong on the facts. So that's the worst combination to then lead up to the condescending performance she put on today to try to cover up her mistake from the previous day. Bill Malugin, another colleague here at Fox News, in fact-checking the additional clarification, Malugin says there was a window of time earlier this year where encounters with Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, and Cubans did temporarily dip 90% after a policy change, but other countries, including China, shot up by over 800%. Illegal crossings, including Venezuelans, now are back at peak highs now. And we gave you some of the stats. That's how they're approaching the border crisis at this White House. This was par for the course with them. It's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic on substance and on style. It's the Guy Benson Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> 